So this topic was requested by someone. I don't know if that someone is still here, but I think you're all aware of this website called uh, julesbrahmakumaris.org. Do you know about that? So all of these classes, even if the people leave, it's wonderful that they can still hear and sh you know learn of the experiences. So the topic is, Baba says, use me. So the topic is how to use Baba. And we'll also explore what happens when we don't use Baba. And uh, we've got three, very, three people with very different experiences, but very wonderful experiences. And, um, you know, Brother Golo is working on a project and he is going to use Baba to get, I think, something like $15 million to make this project happen and, you know, all the experience that is going to have to kind of come from the sky to make something happen like a thermal power station, solar power station, which is a very rare thing and not something easily kind of you can get help with. So he's using Barbara a lot. Sister, sorry, I forgot how to say it. Naraini. Sister Naraini, Dr. Naraini from Malaysia. His brother Golo lives here, I think you know. Since how many years, Golo by 18. 18 years he's been staying in Madhuban, working on all the solar energy and much more. Dr. Naraini is from Malaysia, and she came to Madhuban as a peace of mind guest. Coming from a Muslim background, she told me she had rosaries all over her body so that no one would convert her from being a Muslim. <laughs> And when she got all the answers from Daddy Janky that she'd look for in her life, she said to Daddy Janky, you're the first real Muslim I've ever met. <laughs> so I think this is why Daddy said today she's her friend, her Muslim friend. <laughs> and um, then we also have, I know you so well, and it's just slipped my mind. Lavina, Sister Lavina from Texas and Baba saved her life. That's how she found, Baba found her, saved her life. So she's been using Baba, knowing that Baba can do anything and create miracles. First, we'll hear from Sister, um, Nar I can't get it. I don't know why. Sorry. Naraini. It's just like Narayan. Okay. Naraini, Sister Naraini, because she has an appointment at 12 o'clock. So she's going to be leaving us soon. So let her in a relaxed way, share some experiences. But, you know, stories we love to hear, but they do take a long time. So if you can just keep to, you know, use me. So Baba says, use me. So how have you used Baba? And what has been your experience when you didn't use Baba? Om Shanti. When you told me this morning that I had to be on the panel, um, Oh, I was quite nervous and I was saying, okay, Baba, uh, I'll be obedient today and I'll say, uh, since you're using me, I'll say yes. And then instantly I remember the topic is use Baba. So this is my first, uh, give Baba a try now. I'm using Baba for this because I'm very nervous uh, and shy. Uh, <clears throat> um, I work in a very busy clinic, private clinic in Malaysia. And... Um, we see uh, lots of patients with so many problems, you know. Uh, they come with a whole uh, combination of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual problems. And they manifest sometimes just uh, uh, physical symptoms like headaches or backaches. But deep within, you know, there's, a lot, there's some kind of a cry for help. And you're just looking for someone to understand them and to give uh, compassion and some kind of understanding. Um, and it's not easy you now with the world being the way it is, with so much stress and so much illnesses and so much problems. Uh, we have to be really sharp, you know, rather than just prescribing medici medicine. That's not, uh, that's not why they come to the clinic. So when I do remember to use Baba, um, it's wonderful sometimes because, you know, instantly, this feeling of compassion and mercy and real love for the soul in front of you just develop. And it's like 
the, 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 the mind can touch their minds. And I could almost read what they're saying in their hearts as well. I could feel what they're feeling and what, what they're trying to say through their, through their minds. And in that meeting of the minds and the heart for that instance, it's like Baba just make me know where to touch and just what the right things to say, essencefully, to the point that sometimes the patients can just break into tears and say, how do you know, you know? Uh, and many times, people will come back months or years later and they just say, thank you for the things that you have said or the things you have done. And I said, what did I do? And they said, you know, you said this and this, and it really sorted a lot of things out. And I don't remember doing that. So, uh, and, and the lots, the, the kind of blessings you get when you just do this to people. And being an instrument uh, in the form of profession as a doctor is wonderful because doing it the right way, you can get lots and lots of blessings. But sometimes can I just when I ask forget at to this balance. point, were you able to do that before you met Baba? Did oh. you have it before? Oh, I was very intellectual before, very egoistic and intellect, very strong physically. No, I'm not talking about the divine intellect. So, you know, it's like competing who's the more brighter doctor who can prescribe the best medicine, you know, who can stitch up a patient at surgery the best way, kind of thing. So, yeah, it's impressive on a superficial level just for that moment in time, but it didn't leave any kind of comfort for the patients, neither did it leave any satisfaction to me personally. But then, uh, you know, when you get carried on with the work and something, you forget the balance you know, between uh, self and service. You get tired, you tend to get overworked, and you don't sleep enough. And then you fail your umbrella. When I don't get up from my umbrella sometimes, then I don't charge myself, and I get weaker. And that's when the body consciousness seeps in, when you're tired, and you gradually run out of these treasures that you want to give to people, that love, that, that feeling of understanding and mercy and peace. I just lack that after a while, and I just started becoming calculative, like scraping deep inside my heart to just to try to give something to souls in front of me. And at the end of it, I just feel very dry and I get very irritable and, and ultimately, you know, I get angry and very body conscious. I get sick and of course no blessings. I get very bossy with my stuff uh, and get easily uh, tired, which then leads to, you know, this physical and emotional and spiritual exhaustion later leads to physical illnesses. So I got ill quite often. A doctor who, who became more of a patient than a doctor at that time. So the whole of last year was a good example of me being an authority of not using Baba. Because I skipped classes, I didn't get up for Ambrit Vela, and I used lots of excuses. Maya was my friend, you know, it was like my persuader. <clears throat> and if anybody tried to remind me, I says, okay, Get Baba to see the patients, get Baba to do all the computer work, get Baba to pay the bills, you know, go ahead. I'm just going to relax here, see if Baba can do it. And if I see the staff or anybody getting uneconomical, you know, wasting and things like that, and I said, you know the kind of things you guys are doing? Even Daddy Junkie, if she's here, she'll get annoyed. You know, those kind of things, you just find reasons for being in the state that you are. And, I mean, I almost didn't come to Madhuban this year because I was so disheartened with my progress and the state of condition I was in. Um, but, you know, Baba works wonders sometimes and he just touches the soul. And being here in Madhuban after two weeks, it just transformed me completely and just, you know, recharged me again and knowing that I need to use him constantly. So this visit's been a good reminder. <gasps> good, good. Baba works in mysterious, unique ways, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And Sister Lavina, what was your story of how you came to Baba? In brief. <laughs> Om Shanti. This was about 30 years ago and I underwent a brain surgery and um, I used to get headaches for 10 years and uh, my Lokik mother-in-law, she was a BK, Dali Savitri from Hong Kong and uh, Sister Maureen knows her very sweet when she would come and visit me her actions were too good too sweet but never never ever pushed on me or told me anything about raja yoga nothing and i just loved her actions so she gave me books uh the thin books the seven days course books and she said whenever you get time lavina read these books i said okay so i put them in the closet for 
after three years, you know, I, when I was having these, for 10 years I had these migraine headaches and then um, one day I got this blackout, I, you know, and then I told my logic husband to take me to a doctor and he did and the doctor said, I don't see anything wrong with her but let her have CAT scan, which at that time there was CAT scan and now today we have MRI. And in the CAT scan it was shown that I had a tumor in the brain, so I had to undergo a surgery. It was very necessary because uh, they did not know whether it was malignant or non-malignant. So Deepak, uh, my Lokik husband, he called Dadi Savitri and Dadi Savitri said, call up. The closest one you can call is Dr. Hansa Ravel. She's about 10 hours drive from me and she's the closest one. So she came to see me before going in for surgery the next day and uh, she said, I looked at her and I said, why is God punishing me? She said, oh no, God is not punishing you. He's removing your sorrow. And I said, what? I'm suffering? She said, no, you're not suffering. Your body is suffering. And I said, I don't understand what you're saying. She said, and then she said, you are light, body suffering. It, it, you know, it took a second for me to understand that. But it, then she, I said, then who's God? And she said, light. And I really became light at that second and I didn't even know what was happening to me. And um, um, the, at night when the doctor came to give me, to tell me that he was going to use actually a drill because the skull is like a stone, so hard they have to use drill to do the surgery and I, it didn't bother me at all. I didn't even know what was happening. I was already becoming just what she said, you are light, God is light. I was just thinking about that, I'm light. And, I, and in the brain surgery, uh, as, as I went through the brain surgery, I did experience out of the body. I did come to uh, some dimension of light and it was amazing, amazing, beautiful light but it was too far away. I could not get closer and I am saying to myself and I, why are you, who are you? You are so beautiful, why are you so far? And the next minute I saw myself, I am in intensive care unit and I am jumping from the bed and because what I had seen of beauty, I wanted to go there. You know, I was, uh, so the nurse saw me and said, oh my God, this patient is going to kill herself. So he called the doctor and the doctor said, give her a, in, a shot, put her to sleep. So, you know, when I got up after two hours later again, and I'm saying to myself, that light, that light, you know, I could not connect myself, that light would be God. I just, just could not. I. Then I said, um, of course, the next morning when I saw the, the doctor came to see me, he said, Lavina, you have, uh, you have cancer and you got three months to live. I don't know what was happening. It didn't bother me at all. It didn't bother me. And I said, oh, the light, I'll see the light. In my mind, I'm thinking about that. And my husband comes to see me, he's crying. It didn't bother me. It didn't bother me that he's crying. I'm just thinking about the light. And then, of course, you know, so many other pathologists had different, different opinions about, some said I had cancer, some said I have this, some said I have that. So then the doctor got confused. So what he did, he said that the tumor that I had was so deep that he actually did not remove it, he had to do the biopsy. And that biopsy was sent to Dr. Rubinstein, who at that time was the number one doctor in the world who has written books on tumors. And then he sent a message. In the meantime, while that message is being sent, I was sent home and I remember the light that I've seen and the light in the books that I have been given by Dadi Savitri matched. And I said, there's something to that. That's something to that light and in the books that the light shows. So I got up one day in the morning at five o'clock and I started to read the books. I could not believe it, tears just came out. And I, it made sense to me. I'm a being of light. And uh, I read about 
four books and then the next day in the morning I got up again to finish the books. Uh, it just makes sense that God has no body, God is a being of light, he has come to use the body of an old man called Brahma and it just all made sense to me and I cried and cried and cried when I came to know this knowledge and I said wow and then um, when Dali Savitri had come to see me of course then Dr. Rubinstein message came and Dr. Rubinstein message was given that Lavina does not have a um, malignant tumor it's an infection growth now when I went to the doctor and the doctor said you need to go for another CAT scan to see where this tumor is now and, and you won't believe this he could not see the tumor at all it had disappeared I realized this by just thinking of the light I think that power was helping me heal that and it was just disappeared and the doctor didn't care as long as the patient is fine that's it how it disappeared what he didn't care but I wanted to know more about it and so when Dadi Savitri came and I asked her I said why could not I get closer to that light and she said that uh, Lavina when a child is playing outside in a dirt in a sand and they love to play they love to make patty cakes and you know dirty their face their hands with all mud and all that and then when they get tired they go inside and and what do they see their parents sitting on the chair said daddy daddy mommy mommy take me in your lap what will the parents say go clean up yourself go clean up yourself go take a shower and daddy mommy will take you in their lap and then she said when she said that I said oh my gosh I'm full of vices and she looked at me smilingly you get angry I said yeah and you have these vices I said yeah I do I have attachment I have, I have greed I have ego uh, I had ego because of body consciousness a lot because in uh, and you won't believe this it was 1969 I had won the crown of a beauty queen called <laughs> Miss Maharashtra <laughs> I won the hearts of people because of my smile and today I said I have won the heart of God <laughs> and um, and Baba has taught me how to smile and that's you know uh, and then uh, <laughs> and then I said I had to clean myself so you know I did not know anything about the Murleys either Dadi Janvi came to visit me in El Paso Texas and she said she looked at me and she said Baba saved you and I said yes I know Baba saved me and I remember one time when I had a I had a problem and I was now I've been of course then after that I let me tell you I went to Madhuban I met Baba for the first time and that also was amazing how I landed up in Madhuban uh, Deepak Bhai you know when he found out I had cancer he meditated and meditated and meditated and meditated for me and he asked Baba, please help her, please help her. What will I do without her? The three children and he was, you know, and and that's why, you know, when when I got better, he told Baba that I'm going to bring Lavina to Madhuban. And he's never been to Madhuban either. And I think he was in Madhuban when he was four year old. Brahma Baba used to take him for walks and all that. So, but now he's grown up, married, he's never went to Madhuban after that. Anyway, Dadi Janaki, that's a, Dadi, Dadi Savitri decided to take all her family members, all the children to Madhuban. And Deepak Pai, when he found out Lavina has got better, he said, yes, 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 I want to thank Baba for it. I'm coming to Madhuban, I'll take her. So one, uh, one evening, I was just lying down in the bed and I, I heard Deepak Pai talking on the phone and it, he was talking to his mother, Dadi Savitri. And Dadi Savitri was saying, all the children are going to Madhupan now and I would like you also to come and bring Lavina. And he said, no, 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 she's fine now, don't worry and uh, I cannot come, I'm too busy in my business and she's fine, she's okay, don't worry about it. You all go, you all go. As soon as he hung up the phone, he came to me, I got those same feelings of those blackout I had got before I had gone in for surgery. And I said, I don't know what's happening to me. And he said, what is happening to you? 
I said, I think I'm getting those blackout. No, 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 it cannot be. I said, yes, I'm getting those again. And then I, I see him, he walk outside and, and he called the doctor who was my neighbor and uh, he said, there's nothing wrong with Lavina. I don't know why she's getting this blackout again. Then he went on the phone and he talked to Dadi Savitri. He said, um, mother, mom, I'm coming to Madhupan and I'm bringing Lavina with me. You see, at that time, I was not, not much in Gyan. All I had read the seven days book and I did not know much about it. So, and then he came up to me and he said, how are you feeling now? I said, I'm okay. He said, are you getting more blackout, that blackout? And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, no, I have to take Lavina. I have to take Lavina to Madhupan. Then we did, the first time I met Baba, it was in a small meditation room, and it was like face to face. Baba used to meet at that time. And uh, Man Mohini Didi was there at that time, and she said, Baba said to me just one word. And he said, you are a gopi. And I said, I went to Shilupen. Shilupen, Baba said only one word to me, gopi. But the gopis are dead and gone. And she said, but the, but, the, but the story of the gopis are now, that's going on. You are not dancing around Krishna, you're dancing around God, the light, Shibaba. I, The whole knowledge of the Gita just fit in so well when that just one word has been spoken to me, what gopi meant. It felt so good, so good that God is the seminizer of the Gita and He's come to give me this knowledge. Going back, I just wanted to tell you that um, one of my experiences I've had was so beautiful. I had some problem and I was uh, sitting and meditating and talking to Baba and I said, Baba, I was crying. <laughs> Why did you help me from cancer? I wish I had been dead. Uh, you should not have helped me. I cannot face this problem. I was talking to him like that and telling him. And he, he said, and then I heard a voice saying, My Cinderella? And I said, What? My Cinderella? And I said, Is that you? Are you calling me Cinderella? I'm crying and you're calling me Cinderella. Get into the carriage. And I said, What? get into the carriage. I said, but I want to know, why didn't you let me die if I... Then the voice came again and said, okay, suppose you had died. Let's think about this. And I said, what? Who's talking this to me? Let's think about it. What would have happened to you? Just think if you had died. You would have come out from the body, you would have become a ghost, and because of your attachment, you would have roamed around your children and your husband. And I said, oh my gosh, is that you, Baba? That is right. Okay, now you're my Cinderella. You get into the carriage with... I said, carriage? Okay, I'm going to sit in the carriage. He said, before it becomes too late, that carriage is going to turn into a pumpkin. Oh, the <laughs> way he said it, and I laughed and laughed. He just removed my uh, sorrow and my crying and was laughing. And it was so funny, the next day was Halloween in America. <laughs> and, and you know, those days, I, I, I seen that the children, the people keep pumpkins, pumpkins in their <laughs> homes, and I see these children, they're so destructive. They take the pumpkins from the homes where people put it for decoration, they throw it on the street and beat it, and oh, and it was all, you know, so... After the, after the Halloween got over, the day after that again, um, I was driving the children to, to some uh, classes, some gym classes and all that, dancing classes, and I was looking at the squash pumpkin and I was laughing away. And I said, Baba, this is so funny. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm sitting in the carriage with you, but I'm looking at these pumpkins on the road, so many and they're all so squashed. I said, oh my God, then I said, the world is going to be squashed like this. Oh my God, we have to do Mansa Seva, we have to do Mansa Seva. That's how I learned to do Mansa Seva also, <laughs> because of the squashed pumpkins. And I still remember the children when they come home, what's wrong with you, why are you laughing? I still remember, I said, 
those squash pumpkins. So what about those squash pumpkins? <laughs> It was so funny. So I've had many, 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 many experiences and I can share even more after I give the brother the chance yeah. to talk. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a relationship you have with Baba. <laughs> so Golo, I know you've uh, got just as entertaining a relationship with Baba. Tell us something about it. How do you use Baba? And does he work? <laughs> Om Shanti. Um, well, um, when I came in Gyan, um, I had not much of a clue of Baba, you know, who's Baba, what is going on. I was uh, more attracted by the Gyan and, um, and that a new golden age is coming. And uh, then slowly, slowly I realized also that God is floating on top of that and uh, sort of orchestrating to give this divine knowledge to all of us and sort of also pulling us to come into this knowledge. And um, in the beginning I had no clue what I will do in Brahman life. I had a lot of crazy ideas and uh, one time I thought Baba needs a bus so we can travel everybody around so I got a bus, a second-hand bus, and I took some BKs around, and then I traveled in India and um, seen a lot of old pilgrimage places and went in Haridwar and the Ganges and, uh, and was in most of the oh. big temples. And um, it's not so much how we are using Baba, it's, I think, the other way around, how Baba is using us, because Baba has the key for the future and he knows the potential of each and everybody of us. He knows also the future and the role what we are playing and he knows also the past very well. So then I came, 1985 I came first time to India and um, then we started uh, some support for the Global Hospital and we set up a charitable trust in Germany and then I remember that one sister, she was a regisseur, she brought some small solar car to Madhuban. It was like a toy. And that was maybe 87, 86. And she put it in the courtyard and that little car was driving in circles. And all the Madhuban Ivasis, they were standing there. And uh, Daddy also said, oh, very good. Solar energy, very good. But nobody had any idea so I thought we should do something more and we should bring that solar energy to Madhuban and we should make this place independent. Uh, because at that time I already had the feeling that this world will come to an end. Um, of course that was 25 years ago and uh, there was no Chernobyl and there was no... There was not that kind of tension that we has it, as we have it at the moment. And the world was in a totally different situation. And when you were talking of destruction or problems, everybody said, no, 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 it will take another hundred years or whatever. Now if you talk about these things, people have a different mindset because of the world situation. So we started to set up a trust in Germany, then we brought small solar system here. And I met some um, professor of a research institute and we set up a very first small solar system here in Gyan Sarova. And we built backside that small solar house. And um, so Baba was actually more using me and touching me to do these kind of things. And slowly, slowly our work became bigger and the projects became bigger. And I always had some, I always had some idea I should do something, like a touching. And then I did it. Sometimes it sounded a bit crazy. And I came to Nevebai and Nevebai said, No, Golo, this is not a good idea. Just wait. And I was like, I was like, um, I was coming back and again and again and again. <laughs> and finally, because I came so many times, he said, okay, 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 do it, do it, do it. So somehow that's how the solar systems came into action. And Baba's institution is now the biggest user in India 
as renewable energy and somehow now everybody talks about it that it is becoming very important and um, now about two years ago uh, we had a, some dinner party in solar house with some spaghetti and there was a, one of our friends from Germany who was helping us in designing those solar systems. He's not a BK, but he's a very cooperative soul. I told him, we should buy, we should build a big power station. He said, Golo, don't do it. It's very complicated and it's very costly. You don't have the land, you don't have the money, and you don't have the technology. Then after two minutes I said, oh, we should do something in that direction. Again this idea popped up. And uh, I could not stop that idea. So I went to Neverby and I said, Neverby, Neverby, we should build a solar thermal power plant. Never looked at me. I said, it's just um, 15 million US dollar. <laughs> then Neverby said, don't talk any further to me about this. And I said, okay, 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 okay. Then I went to Ramesh Bhai and I said, Ramesh Bhai, Ramesh Bhai, we should build a solar thermal power plant. It's just 15 million US dollar. And Ramesh Pai said, I have no money. <laughs> Don't come back to me with this. So for one year, periodically, I went to those brothers and I said, we should do something because this would help us a lot when times will become critical. Now, after three years, Baba has bought the land, which is one kilometer away from Shantivan. It's the same size like Shantivan. And... Um, we have a sanction for 50% of the funding from the Indian government and the German government. So we have applied and we officially have launched the project in December. Everybody of rank in the Yagya was on stage. Dadi Janki, Dadi Kulzar, Neverbai, Ramesh Bai, Karuna Bai, Bridge Mohan. Everybody was sitting on stage, Jenti Ben, all RCs. We have made official opening of that plant and um, now every Baba's meeting I'm after the class I'm addressing to the whole gathering and we soon will send a, a mail to in the rosary uh, for the cooperation and Baba said in the Muli there will be darkness in India outside and you will have light so you have to do this project and uh, I was a bit worried in my mind because I thought where the money should come, where should the technology and the hands come, and uh, so many problems in this project, no? like massive mountain of problems. So I was on the stage and met Baba, and I had all these questions in my mind, question one, question two, question three. You know, and many times it happened if you come in front of Baba, because of that light, you're forgetting that questions. So this time I thought, I'll have all these questions, Baba, and this time you won't trick me. I will ask one, two, three, four, five, because where should the money come? Where should the hands come? Where should the technology come? So I was in front of Baba and I said, okay. And I just wanted to open my mouth and then Baba said, Bache, child, don't think so much. <laughs> and I thought, um, I said, yeah, 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 okay, okay, Baba. But, and then Baba said, don't think so much. So I'm, I thought, um, yeah, okay, but, and then he said a third time, don't think so much. And then I had forgotten all my questions and it was completely blank out. Now I have decided not to worry at all about the project, not to think at all about the project, I just let it happen. I just dance. I just try to dance and if the brothers come to me and say, Golo, Golo, um, there's a problem, I said, okay, okay, we'll solve it, just do like that. But I don't go into detail, I don't, I don't get upset, I, don't, I try not to get upset, I try not to get irritated. We have very little money left over at the moment on the bank account. So I'm saying, Baba, it's your project, you organize the funding. It's not my issue. No? Six months ago or one year ago, I would have got a heart attack, you know, where's the money coming? Well, we just have another one month money on the bank account for that project. So I said, Baba, it's your project and you have to do it. Now Japan is falling apart. No? The war is in Libya. You know, we need special glass, we need special turbine from foreign, we need chips from Japan, microchips, to control that power plant. Now I said, Golo, don't worry, 
if the microchips will not come from Japan, they will come from somewhere else. But it will happen. So I found out the best thing is how you can actually go along with Baba is that you don't worry. And if Baba is using you for something, just be happy, smile and dance. And don't get upset. It takes a bit time uh, to come to such a stage, especially if it's a 15 million US dollar project. Um, but it's the only way how you can do such a project in these times and in this institution. Because here, a lot of karma is there and self-transformation is going on all the time. So it is a beautiful opportunity for everybody if you get a chance and Baba is using you. And it's a double play. Actually in the morning you can also, in morning in Amrit Vela, you can use also Baba and you can tell to him, Baba, this is the issue, this is the issue and this is the issue. For example, we don't have enough hands to help us in the projects. You know, and we need engineers, no? we are building a power plant. You know, like 2,000 foundations, 5,000 tons of steel, 200 workers, technical drawings, setting up a whole factory. And we do fabrication ourselves, procurement ourselves. So we don't have the proper hands. So after I gave the presentation in the, in, after the Muli in Shantivan, uh, I said we also need hands and I set up a web page. Now every day I get one email. Oh brother, brother, I'm an engineer. I worked 10 years in Dubai in power plant and I'm fed up and I want to join that project. Here's my bio data and I can come anytime. Please, please allow me to join. So every day such an email is coming. Now I'm thinking, my God, so many people want to join. What should I do with them? Now we have to select. You know, we cannot take everybody. No, no, we have to select, you know, whom to take and whom not to take. So this is how actually things are happening and that is a beautiful experience. And this gives in return confidence in yourself, in your own ability, as well as you create confidence in the role of Baba. So actually Baba is doing these projects. It is the issue that we are not always aware that Baba actually is using us. Baba is sitting there bodiless, he sees the light, he sees the subtle region. And everything is manifesting first in the subtle region, in the area of light. We are, due to body conscious, we are bound. We are bound and we are stuck in this physical realm. And sometimes in meditation we are going up in subtle region to the light. Baba sees all the time in the light what is happening. And he's urging us, children, work through your mind and create the thoughts. Then anything is possible and you can use Baba for any for any task you want to achieve. Ultimately, we will create a new world and a new universe. It's a big task. No? So should we, we should always be aware about that potential and we should open the mind to the unlimited. And the more we open ourselves, the more Baba can use ourselves. So it's a vice versa role. Om Shant. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask Sister Naraini before she leaves us. Is it we are using Baba or Baba is using us? What do you think? <laughs> um, the answer differs depending on my self-respect. <laughs> Sometimes we fail to stay in our self-respect and we forget. Um, you know, either way. Um, I think it's both ways, you know. Um, Baba is, if we offer ourselves to Baba, uh, and that is ideally what I want to do, really from my heart, I want to offer myself fully, uh, body, mind, wealth, um, just use me. Because um, if I'm not kept busy, and, or if I'm not being used um, I, in Baba service, then you know, Maya will drag me and I'll be you know, going at a loss. Uh, but in our everyday activity as well, um, we have to remember using Baba. You know, Brother Golo is sharing really big, fantastic things. And I use Baba, for example, in ordinary ways. I remember once, uh, last year I was coming over to Madhuban and I love coming to Madhuban carrying all these gifts and things for Baba, you know. And we're always overloaded. But, I mean, the bag is like too heavy and uh, usually we get a penalty to pay for that. And I remember uh, uh, telling one of the sisters, I said, look at that couple, you know, husband and wife. The wife is just carrying the uh, handbag 
and the husband is doing all the worrying about carrying the case and doing whatever negotiation has to be done with the counter. And the sister says, then why don't you use Baba uh, as your husband? And I've never really tried that before, you know, <laughs> having Baba as my husband. So I said, yeah, why not? I'll try that. So, okay, Baba, so you, you helped me carry all this luggage across. And um, it was very heavy because I was trying to uh, lessen the weight on the uh, check-in baggage. I carried most of the weight by the hand carry. It looked small, but it was very, very heavy. And I remember all the way across, you know, from Kuala Lumpur through Singapore and to Ahmedabad and to the Ahmedabad um, and to the center, how Baba helped. You know, I didn't have to pay anything. And how the air hostesses were so kind and helped carry the, the, the hand luggage for me. And even at the customs and the immigration, you know, no questions asked. They just look at you and I was wearing my locket clothes. And I didn't have a badge even. And he just looked at me and says, Om Shanti, and just passed me through very easily. <laughs> and coming back, I was having extra baggage because carrying books and things for Baba to Malaysia. And again, I said, okay, Baba, you do the wonder this time. And I remember at the airport, um, some of the sisters and the other uh, passengers had to pay a lot for over, over weight baggages. And I got through initially, but as we were getting on the bus, I think one of the officers saw me having difficulty in carrying the hand luggage across on the bus, and then he caught me that I was having two suitcases, and that suitcase was very, very heavy. So he says, uh-huh, you know, you can't carry that on. You have to pay for this. So it was really heavy, heavy, and he took it off. He says, you have to, uh, I have to put this in, in the plane, you know. You can bring it uh, uh, at your seat. Anyway, I was just saying, okay, Baba, uh, and I asked him, how much do I have to pay? for this overweight package. And he just look at me and he says, oh, it's all right, you just collected at KL Airport, you know, it's, mm. it's okay. And save me from having to drag that bag up. Yeah. You know how you have to go yeah. up the, the stairs, mm. the steps up on the plane to carry that bag? And how across Singapore, while waiting, I had to carry that. And Baba saved me from that until KLIA. You know, and how, and I just said, I have to try this more often in my, everyday mundane activity it looks very mundane but if i do remember how to use baba you know it became so much fun and so much easy you know when it's so easy to use baba why don't we use baba all the time uh, that's because we uh, well for me it's because as i said just now it's because i i, I forget in terms uh, this so-called body consciousness steps in because we're tired or we forget to to remember baba and when i forget this routine about getting up for Amrit Vela, for example. I and think also it's the, the I comes in between. Eh? Yes, yes. That's yes. the ego. The I and the mind. And I have to do it, and this is my duty, this is my project, this is uh, my car, this is uh, my opportunity, because the ego is always coming between us and God. So to use God is the art is to become egoless, then the energy can flow. I think this is a very important, if we don't say this is mine, this is God's task, then everything becomes easy because automatically we remember God. If, I, if we say that is mine, we block the energy of God and we cannot allow God to let his light shine on that particular task because we block it. We are going in between and then there will be sh our shadow on that task. So the art is to become bodiless, then there won't be any shadow. Mm. And then God's light can shine on that particular project or that particular task. So ego is one of the most subtle and most tricky vices to conquer. Mm. And even it is very subtle at the end, you know, like very fine. Not easy to detect always. What do you think, Levine Ben? Why don't we use Baba? Why? I mean, when it, everything's so easy when we use Baba, so why aren't we using him all the time? And he says, use me. It's, uh, it's very right. It's the ego that comes in between. I also look at it that way. It's, Baba says, how is it that was our downfall? The two things that we always use, I and mine, these are the two downfall that came into our life and we lost Baba. We lost Baba and we did not know who Baba was. It's because of these two, I 
and mine. And uh, if you look at it, Baba's very beautiful. Baba tells us about his praise. What is it? He's, even though it is viceless, but he's also called egoless. Bodiless, egoless, and viceless. In viceless, also the egoless comes in. But it's double. Egoless, bodiless, egoless, and viceless. Viceless means having no vices. E greed, ego, anger, attachment, lust. All these five are not there, being viceless. And so, Baba is still egoless, bodiless, and viceless. So double egoless has been put there, if you look at it. It's put that way. So, yes, our downfall is from the ego of Thank I you, and mine. Thank you, Sister Naraini. <laughs> and as she said, I just asked her this morning, like 9.30, and she said, okay, <laughs> let Baba, let me test Baba on use me. So, thank you. So, um, did you finish? Sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> mm. So, another story on how you have used Baba? A, a very challenging one, perhaps. Where, when I came into Gyan, and it had been only like uh, uh, Jaya, the little one was about um, four years old. Uh, no, she was one year old, and I was in Gyan three years old then, and she was four years old. And um, uh, I was, I used to run a boutique store, and I, I got a phone call from the housekeeper that uh, Jaya was not well. So I went home and I, s I went home to check on her and I said, Jaya, you're not feeling good. She said, uh, Mommy, um, I'm okay, I'm fine, but you promise me you'll take me to work with you and I promise you I will not disturb you. Can you take my pillow and my blanket? I'll just sleep there. I said, okay. And I checked her, she was not running fever or anything, she was just coughing slightly, so I just gave her some cough syrup and she had some water and so I took her with me to work and she was just lying down on the floor while I was working um, and on the counter and then all of a sudden she started to to cough and I looked back and her cough was pretty bad and as she's coughing coughing she was trying to also you know uh, throw up what was stuck in her the cough syrup and it would not come out, so it got stuck. So when it got stuck, it uh, blocked the air passage. When it got blocked the air passage, she totally turned black, blue, and purple. So I quickly picked her, picked her up, and uh, she literally died in my hands. I saw she was gone. So I, I quickly told the manager, I said, Elizabeth, call Mr. Waswani that Lavina has taken Jaya to the hospital. So the hospital is about uh, eight minutes drive from the store I was. So uh, I didn't wear my shoes. I dropped my shoes down there. I hold her with one hand, and I and I drove with my other hand. And so as I was driving, I was talking to Baba. I said, Baba, she's your child, not my child. And um, uh, but Baba, uh, okay, she's left the body now, and this soul is going to go and be born in another home. Okay, why are you wasting her time? I'm telling. Why don't you, uh, why don't you let me help her? If she's got this mother, I could help her and teach her about you, Baba. But if you let her die and have another mother, then she's going to uh, waste her time. You always say, don't waste your time either. So. Why are you letting her waste her time? Oh, but it's okay. Drama, like you say, is accurate. I'm talking all this as I'm driving. You know, she's dead in my hand, and I'm driving with one, uh, one hand, and I'm holding her with the other hand. And I said, okay, but drama is accurate, like you say. Whatever it is you want to decide, you decide. I accept it, whatever you want. And then all of a sudden, there was a bump, and in that bump, she jerked. And whatever was, it came out. And then she looked at me, she said, Mommy, Mommy, why you didn't answer me? Mommy, I could see you and I beat you up. I said, you beat me up? She said, yeah, I kicked you and I beat you because I was saying, Mommy, 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 and you were not listening to me. Then I realized, oh, the soul was out from the body and, this, and she's looking at me, but I cannot see the soul, you see? And Baba can see the soul. And so she was trying to catch my attention, but I could not because 
And so then I quickly took her to the hospital and I told uh, the emergency that uh, she's had some trauma and they said, they checked her up, they said, yes, she has and we would like to keep her overnight just to have a, a look and to make sure she's okay. But next morning then she was fine by the afternoon, uh, they let her, you know, they let her go home. And then I remembered that Brahma Baba had given to my Lokik husband uh, uh, seven days course classes through the pictures. So I say, ha ha, now this is a good one. Uh, the, seven, the, the books that I had, the thin books, I started to teach Jaya the knowledge from the pictures. One by one I said, thank you Baba, so you, you know, this is my first student now as a child. You know, so that's how, you know, Baba used me. Well, that's really using Baba to hand over a four-year-old. Not, not many mothers could manage a situation like that at all. Yes, I remember one of my friends said, what happened, what happened? I said, oh, you know, uh, Jaya totally took off. And she, she said, so why didn't you call the ambulance? And I thought to myself, I think I'm much, I was much faster than the ambulance. I said, I could not think at that time. I told her, you know what? I took her myself, but I was meditating. She said, yes, but you should have called. I said, come on, the ambulance will take about half hour to come. I was already there, you know. Mm. Ambulance sometimes do take longer time, even though you call them 15 minutes, 20 minutes, sometimes half hour, you never know. So. Yeah, so really the power in being able to really, again, see this child as Baba's and yeah. not your own, because I had this experience with a sister in Hong Kong. Her son was around 20 and he was uh, maybe about 18 and he was addicted to heroin and uh, it was in the full kind of experience of that addiction that he disappeared and she couldn't find him for two days and after a little while, really quite a short while, and she was staying in the center with me, um, she really handed him to Baba and said, He's your child, and it's all very well to say it, but I could see in those two days, she was very, you know, she was managing very well. And then when she found him, he was in, you know, um, in the best area of Hong Kong, staying in one of these mansions, and, and then he became, from there, he became a, a drug rehabilitation counselor. But it was that moment where I saw really, I, it's very rare that a mother can really hand over their child at that time, so wonderful. You know, one of the things that Daddy always says that mothers have a lot of attachment, mm. but I think, you know, what I found out that uh, it was very fast that I, uh, the attachment was removed. I, and I was, became such a detached observer. And so we have to observe this. The more we become a detached observer, more we can help people, not only your own families, you know, own children, but others also around you. Like, you know, for example, I was also, I landed up in Japan when the earthquake was going on. Um, this was, um, what happened is the, um, the pilot announced just one hour before we were going to land, he said, there has been an earthquake and we cannot land in this international airport, it's closed. They announced this morning that the workshop will finish at 12, but normally it's 12.30, it was a mistake. Are you okay to stay on? Happy to stay on? A lot of good stories, huh? Okay, good. So he said that we were going to go to another airport and uh, there has been an earthquake. And, uh, and I looked around, so there were quite a lot of passengers that were getting down in Japan, in Tokyo. And, uh, and they looked very worried and their faces I saw became very small. And I said, wow, Baba, whatever it is, the drama, it's beautiful, I keep saying, because I, I just love the conference age. It's just beautiful to be with God. When can you find God again? Never, only in conferences. So just use Him and enjoy Him now as much as you can. So to me, I was just silent and I started to send a lot of love and light, Mansa Seva through my mind and then uh, we got, we, the, the airport was closed and the plane landed up on the ground, not at the gate. There was no gate for us. And, um, and then um, 
the passengers for Tokyo, they all got down. Uh, there were about 100 of them and their faces were very small. The cell phones could not work. They could not get hold of their uh, relations, their friends, whoever they were trying to call. And they looked worried and they said, I, I asked someone, said, are you able to connect? She said, no, nobody. And you know, I said, oh, Baba, love and light to the soul, have mercy on her. And they all walked out and then they said, Singapore passengers, please sit down. We will let you know as soon as uh, we let you know what time we can leave from here. Two hours passed by, no word. We were in, sitting in the plane. And then the pilot said, we're going to be here another two hours. Okay, fine. And I said, Baba, I, I'm, you know, I was giving a lot of, doing a lot of mansa seva. Because Baba, how much sorrow people must be in that trapped in earthquakes of trying to send a lot of love, peace, mercy to them. And then after that I said, Baba, now I think I need to sleep, I'm tired. Let me f go to sleep and then when I freshen up, that I will do some more of this meditation. But I never ever for a single thought that I had, what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to us, is the plane going to leave or not, nothing, nothing, nothing whatsoever, no waste thoughts. Just left it all to Baba. And then uh, went to sleep for a couple of hours, so got up again, the pilot said another two hours, again another two hours, like that 16 hours had flown by. And we had flown from Los Angeles to Tokyo for 10 hours. So we have been sitting for 26 hours in the plane. And I tell you, I was doing so much Mansa Seva and I told Baba, Thank you for allowing me to be here in this plane that you can use me so I can give the mansa seva to these poor souls who and we had no idea not whatsoever how bad this uh, earthquake was. We had no idea. And another thing, when we had landed two hours after that, what had happened is there was aftershock, but we did not know. We thought they were busy taking out the luggage from the plane and sometime there is that little shake in the plane. But wh what happened later on that I was talking to this flight attendant and he said that, uh, I said, he said, did you feel that sh uh, sh aftershock? I said, Oh, that was aftershock, I asked him. He said, yes. I said, that was twice, isn't it? He said, yes, it was twice. It was aftershock that we had. And you know, it's a huge plane and, and still the earth, can you imagine the earth is uh, so powerful to shake this heavy metal piece, the airplane. I was just thinking about that. I said, wow, Baba, love and light to the dirty, to the earth too, and love and light to the air. And I was just talking to the five elements of nature and giving them vibration and keep telling them, you are also Baba's friend, you are helping Baba, you are in the unlimited, you are light, I'm also in the unlimited. The earth is unlimited and we are also in the unlimited with Baba when we know Baba. So this way I was doing my Mansa Seva to the earth, to the mother nature, to all the souls that are trapped and I thank Baba for letting me be there and allowing me to be the instrument to serve the people in Japan. And then next morning, another plane came in, which was on the gate, Singapore airline, and then we got down from this plane, and then we flew the next uh, seven hours after that, I reached Singapore, and then I was able to email everyone that I was fine, because they were uh, wondering what happened to me, how come I had not called when I had arrived in Singapore. Om Shanti. See how Baba uses us, you know? Mm, amazing. So it is a bit of both, isn't it? Baba using us and us using Baba because it did seem that you were there to be used for that Mansa Seva. It's both ways. Baba mm. needs us and we need Baba. It's mm. like that. That's how I see it. Mm. Golubai, another experience where you have used Baba, Baba has used you. Like, for one, I remember you were waiting for the people to come and build the solar panels and waiting, 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 and I heard they didn't come, so you built them. So how did you do that? <laughs> well, that I don't remember. But um, some, some days ago, in last Aviak Muli, um, Baba spoke that 
everybody here in the institution, everybody plays his role. And um, the point is, what is our role? What we actually want to achieve in life? How we become happy, how we become satisfied? And uh, where are our specialities which I can make use in a proper way? So I think it was when Muni Ben was talking, Mohini Ben, little Mohini was talking to Baba, and then Baba said, everybody plays his part in the institution also, but even outside everybody plays his part, and everybody plays his ideal part. Now the art is to find that ideal part. What is my ideal part? Some people are very good organizers. Some people are not good organizers. They may be good talkers. And some people may be not even good talkers, but they're good yogis. So now the art for everybody is to find your ideal role. And um, if you find your ideal role, you will become also very satisfied and happy. Um, I was running around a lot. Um, I'm still running around a lot, but I'm slowly understanding that is not my ideal role. Oh, you've been running around ever since I've known you, <laughs> doing this and that and creating. Yeah, all the time something <laughs> is going on, and even now my mobile is ringing. No? Can't <laughs> lift it. No, sorry, can't lift it now. And um, so, slowly, slowly, while doing, we get a feedback. And um, through that feedback, we will be able slowly, slowly to identify what is really suiting to me. And what is suiting to me mostly is also my ideal role, and that is also what Baba is expecting from me, and that's where I can take the best help from Baba, and that's where I can progress fastest. Now the art is to see that little signals in drama and see the seniors, observe them, how they act. I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot uh, by observing the seniors and see how they run, how they, how they manage situations under stress. Because usually when you come into stress, then it's the real breaking point. Are you stable or is it only artificial? Is your calmness on the surface or it is also inside? And I'm, I, from my nature, I can freak out very easily. I'm very hot blood. So since 26 years, my major effort is to calm down and relax. <laughs> because I'm fast. I think fast. I'm usually thinking miles ahead of people around me. I see things ahead. And uh, this is a problem. Because I'm <laughs> it doesn't help me, you know. So I have to relax and calm down. And then I realize my job is not running around a lot and say, oh, we should do this, we should do this, we should do this. Still, this is part of my job. But my job is more being in the background now and to give strength to certain activities or give strength to other people to do that or to give guidance. And this is the role also Baba said, you be case, you will be revealed after some time. When the situation in the world will become more dramatic, and we just can see these rehearsals of Japan, and now is Libya, and now next maybe will be financial crisis, and you know, maybe dollar will break, and euro will break, and world economy will go in shambles, and so many things will happen. And people around us, they will freak out. And now the big question is how we BKs are reacting to those things. Because the world, as we can see with our eyes, will change dramatically. And this is not a joke, you know, it's world transformation. This is a big thing. Because whatever we are used to see, whatever we are used to deal with, foundation where we were living on, all that will become shaky. And it will start changing. 
So we have to build our foundation in, a, in the light, in the subtle world. And we have to stabilize ourselves in that divine knowledge which we have. And we have to stabilize ourselves in the divine experience of meditation. So we can face those changes. And then we will be able also to give this light and might to those souls which are disturbed. And now slowly, slowly, souls are getting disturbed. That is the time. And Baba said, you will become light and might house and then you will give through your stage and your calmness, you will give that what is needed to the other souls. And that is like I'm seeing my role now slowly, slowly shifting more into this area. I'm trying, I still have to run around and do things and send every day 10 emails, 20 emails and the phone is ringing. But I try to be very, very calm, very relaxed and do it out of this consciousness, out of the unlimited consciousness, out of a different perspective. And I think that is very, very important if we are here or we go back to our service places that we stabilize more and more in that powerful stage, in that unshakable stage, and operate out of that stage. And Baba said at the end, you will just give the light to those souls and people will experience that the angels of God, they are helping me and they are calming me down. So this is a big task and we should open our consciousness to this big task. And we should try to come out of the small, 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 small daily things. What I'm doing, what is going on, why he said this to me and this and that. Bikes are usually specialists in getting worried and, um, and getting uh, upset because we have expectations to each other. Because we think this is divine family, so he should behave properly. Why is he not behaving properly? So we because we are specialists. Huh? So Baba said, children, now is time. Huh? So one good experience of how you've used Baba to deal with a karmic account with someone. Because this is practical also, what we're dealing with all the time is these, you know, dancing of the sanskars as we've been hearing. So have you got maybe Lavina while... I was talking to Baba in Baba's room before I came here and um, one thing very nicely that Baba put in front of me and he said, child, how do you use Baba? And Baba put it very beautifully. He says, when you have Gyan, when you read the Murli every day and you use Baba's Murli every day in your practical life, that is using Baba. It touched me so deep and this is why Baba is telling us, read your mulis every day, take the points from the muli, read it, put it in your practical life and you are using Baba every day. And Baba is saying, you will not be disturbed by it because you are using Baba. Murli is actually using Baba. Baba's gyan we use every day, we are using Baba. This is what he said to me. And so mulis are very important and that's why even dadis, after Baba has said not to miss muli a day, dadis do not want us to miss the muli because otherwise you are not using Baba. Thank you, yeah, good. Golo, did you think of one particular one? Or are you still trying to use Baba for that? <laughs> I can't really say there are so many stories and, and situations, you know. And uh, many times Baba has protected me unwillingly. I'm a bit hot blood, you know, so sometimes I drive very fast car. And, um, and I have to drive so many times up and down the mountains, I don't know. I drove maybe 500 times or... Mm. And... Um, so um, sometimes I'm in stress and I have to conduct meditation in Pandav Bhavan. So I'm racing up, you know, which isn't contradictory. No? <laughs> you should conduct meditation in silence, but you're racing up the mountains, you know. To sit on the gadi. <laughs> to sit calm on the gadi, you know, it's like totally crazy, you know. So um, maybe I need that kind of um, tension in my life to become perfect. I don't recommend it to anybody else, my approach towards Kamartit stage and perfection. Um, 
And sometimes I got in serious situation and I could, I could feel, not often but two or three times, I could feel now actually an accident will happen. Because that guy was on my side and, you know, it was not my fault because I'm driving good. Um, Indians, um, they don't drive so good. And, um, and uh, then suddenly something happened and somehow we are bypassing each other in the last second. And I could feel, and suddenly it was like a pick. And I could feel there was an interference from above. And I was saved and spared. And that happened a couple of times. That's using Baba. Yeah, I could feel that a couple of times I'm uh, knowingly saved, and uh, in later I realized that I was later I was saved. I did a lot of things uh, also in in uh, Gyan in this knowledge, uh, which were a bit tricky and a bit dangerous. And um, sometimes it was for Baba, sometimes it was for my own craziness, and uh, <laughs> Baba protected me in all cases, and I'm still in one piece. No? This body is in one piece, which is a bit of a miracle also. Quite some accidents also, with motorcycles and this and that. And, and uh, so Baba protected me, because um, Baba uses me. Mm. And um, he Baba won't find another one quite like you, I don't think. Baba <laughs> wants me to build some power station, so that we have light and we have some comfort, when outside there will be discomfort. But uh -huh. we shouldn't push that. We shouldn't push Baba too much, huh? I don't know. I push Baba, Baba <laughs> pushes me, and Baba knows the timetable. This is his big advantage because he has the periscope to look in the future. And we only get, we're not yet subtle enough, and we still have too much ego and too much attachment to this world to open fully to the future and allow to see to have that vision. Baba said, time will come, you will have that state, you will have mm. that vision, what is going to happen in future. But out of whatever reasons, at the moment we do not have it, which is okay. I think it's all okay in the drama. So what, whenever comes the moment and the appropriate issue, then you will have that power and then you will see and you will experience. So, but by the situation now, we can already get a picture for the near futures, for the next couple of years. So my job is to build that power plant and what comes after that, I hope that my work on this physical realm will then slowly come to an end and I become, can become like an old dada. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had to get a crazy person to do all these big crazy jobs, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I can sit there and just like relax, you know, and say, okay, 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 you know, like that. Let us see what is in pipeline. But it is a, it is a challenging, mm -hmm. very challenging time. It is a dramatic time, and it's a wonderful time also. And we can really create magic. We really can explore our full potential in this time. And whatever we want to do, we can do it. So the limit is the sky, the limit is our own consciousness. This is our limit, what we can imagine. Otherwise, Baba gave us signal, he says, whatever you want to do, do it now. Now is the time. So thank you for being an example in that, really practically, with this huge task that Baba's given <laughs> you. It's a small task. It's, <laughs> it's nothing. Oh yeah, we'll see your next big one after and this. And it's already done. <laughs> One more, one more thing, Baba you, you, Baba, you are using him as a teacher, as a Sadhguru, as a friend, as a father, as a mother, as a travel agency, as a pilot, as a nurse, everything he is, as your business partner. Uh, in the plane, I always use him as my pilot. I feel he's, dry, uh, he's doing, flying me the plane. And then if something, some turbulence ha happen, I said, pilot, how are you driving it? How are you flying it? Oh, you're my pilot. And then I feel like the turbulence, I stopped. So I said, oh, you're a good pilot. You did a good job, you know, because he, he can do everything. So actually we are using him in everything, in every way. Om Shanti. Well, I think Baba chose three very good examples of 
this using me. So thank you to all three, even though Sister Narayan is gone early, but thank you very much. We'll finish with any questions, comments? We just have two or three minutes. Oh, you've enjoyed this wonderful true stories. Okay, we'll finish with some meditation. And by the way, this is uh, Brother Golo's nephew, his second visit to visit Golo Bai, and uh, don't learn too much from him. Huh? <laughs>